Yes. And you know, yes. speaking of interviews, Bob Marley um, was diagnosed. Um, well, there's the story. Cancer of the big toe. Okay, so Bob Marley was found to have cancer of the big toe. The doctors ordered that he cut the toe. Rasta doesn't believe in that. Because in that operation, you know, no blood transfusion, no nothing. Uh, so the cancer crept all over his body. In that concert in 1980, Madison Square Gardens, Bob Marley was opening for the Commodores. Lionel Richie was there, heavy with the Commodores. And that's when he fainted on that stage. Now, after that uh, stress scene in New York, he was flown to Germany, on the therapy, and it was getting real bad. And then he was sent back to Miami. In his hospital room, I did the final interview with Bob Marley before he died. Oh, really? Yes. And the question I asked him there was, Bob, it's rumored that you have cancer. Yeah, I'm so upset, but Rasta not deal with them thing there, you know? Live it here, I deal with kind of thing. And for a good 20 minutes I had him on, um, sharing what he was going through, but he was all upbeat. And, you know, the Rasta philosophy, he's dealing with life. Um, there's no way I, I could have disrespected him and asked him, you know, um, you know, people, people think you're dead. Uh, I, I didn't want to go into that morbid thing. But as I remember, um, it was it, it was a difficult interview for me because medically we knew what had happened to him, and it was just a matter of time. You know, how do I throw in some tough journalistic question um, relating to um, the, the obvious death that was around? Because his body was deteriorating. You know, the cancer taking was over his whole, whole body. So I, yeah, yeah. And um, I don't think he could he could have faced the Jamaican populace at that time. Um, probably would have had to wear a hat all the way. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, from Rasta to bald head because of the, the cancer treatment, you know. Um, must have been rough for him. Mm -hmm. So I thought I dealt with the matter delicately in, in the kinds of questions. And even when I got wanted to, to get some clarification about the, the level of the cancer in his body, I had to say, it is rumor. Yeah. Things like that, you know. But he still responded and uh, he was strong enough to have, you know, responded to the questions and accommodated those questions yeah. So that's one treasured interview I have. But people was wanted to search that out and said, hey, we want that, we want, we got a deal for you. Um, you mean? People in the, in the entertainment business that want that interview, have they approached you on that? Yes, as a matter of fact, um, I've always considered myself a Marley student, mm -hmm. and as a contribution to the estate and to all these kids, um, and I remember the song, um, so just said, not one of my seeds shall sit on the sidewalk and bake bread. Um, probably I should just meet Rita Marley and the family and, and, and hand it over, you know. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't want, um, from a commercial point of view, uh -huh. to, to benefit from that. Uh, no. That would be my treat to the estate. One of the things that I've noticed with you is like you mentioned, if you're talking about Marley, you're going to approach it, you're not going to say it's it, it, the cancer, you're going to say it's rumored or it's mm, alleged yeah. or this or that. Um, I think in almost any interview, you have to approach it where there's certain things you can or can't say. Uh, tell, me, tell me about that, that element of the interview. Um, I, I've learned over the years, um, you know the real situation. Give the interviewee the chance to, to say it. Um, in other words, you're interviewing someone, you're interviewing Bob Marley, he's got the cancer all over his body. Medically, we know this. Um, but as far as that interview is concerned, you are trying to glean things for the listeners. So you, you color the question a particular way. Um, don't let it be that personal where the person is uncomfortable to, to respond. And allow that person to, to, to bring it out. Mm -hmm. and then leave the listeners to judge. Mm -hmm. um, because let's face it, as a journalist, you would have done your homework and you knew a couple of things before you got into the interview. So people may say, but, but Barry, he's a hypocrite here now. He, he knows all the stuff, you know, and he's asking the questions in that fashion. But you must, at the same time, respect 
the, 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 the person's privacy. And if at any point the interviewee says, uh, well, you know, I'm not going to touch that one. Or quite often, you, you can pick up, you know, the mannerism when you're going into some dangerous waters, um, you back off. Unless you're one of those interviewee viewers trying to get some stripes, um, like Barbara Walters. Yeah, and poking it. Yeah, poking it. But I get the feeling, though, that in those interviews, it is discussed before. Absolutely. To say, listen, do you feel comfortable with my talking about so and so and so? Mm -hmm. That must be the only way outside of the sensitivity where you can drop those heavy questions in. Then the person must have known before. It's almost cold in an interview, especially if you're live, by the way, to just throw it on. Yeah. yeah. A live interview is much different. Pre-recorded, much day. There you go. <laughs> so um, over the years, I've learned the craft, and um, and probably it's that kind of uh, emotional side of things on my part that has led that has led to my longevity. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I didn't try to having some hard facts mash down an entertainer. You know, or tear them to pieces in an interview. Uh, I, I didn't think that was necessary. And that doesn't mean you're soft, really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's really like almost like a full course. You don't want to serve up just the dirt. You want to serve up the whole thing. Yes. <laughs> and it's a good test for us, too, to see uh, how we may structure that question and allow the person to feel comfortable and honest to let it all out. That's a good test if you're a good interviewer, if you're able to get the person to say what you were careful about asking, not necessarily afraid of asking, mm -hmm. but being cautious about thinking about the person's own um, feelings and emotions and privacy.